reaching the rendezvous point outside Atari space. Helm, bring us out of warp. Dropping to impulse. Ionic interference surging, Captain. That is about asteroid view again. Shield integrity holding. We can take it. We are the correct coordinates we can to take the it. shuttle. Commander Rydek, find us our diplomat, if you will. I, Captain. Captain. Let's reduce the noise. Filter out environmental signals. I can manually tune what's left for Federation signal types. I've located the shuttle. Opening comms. On screen. Uh -huh. Shuttle to Resolute. Shuttle to Resolute. Debris field. Lost maneuvering. Losing. <laughs> I can't get it Yo, kyllä. Esimies, esimies. Osa, joka osaa hommansa, niin kyllä se on pidetty. Se ei ainakaan haitaks. We'll pull them directly into the docking bay. Toimiko vet, vet impossere. Diaz, you good to run the tractor emitter? Yes, sir. Better uh, be on home, You sure? I'm sure. Excellent, Come on, Diaz. First thing, lock onto the shuttle and stabilize the rotation. The tractor beam can't handle it. Can our shields take it? I believe so. Commander Ryder, plot an intercept course. On it. Maneuvering thrusters bearing 53 Mark 17, 200 meters on an intercept course. Maneuvering. Vähän riskaa peliä nyt ottaa kaasteroni. Got it. Whoa! Someone's working hard on the bridge. on board. Good job. We're on our way down to meet them. Yeah. Terra firma, so to speak. Ambassador Spock? Yeah, so Spock. Captain, we'll be right down to meet you, sir. In that case, I will wait for him here. Wow. 
Let me be the first to say, welcome to the Resolute, Ambassador. Thank you, Petty Officer... Carter? Carter Diaz, sir. I am pleased to meet you, Petty Officer Carter Diaz. It appears I have you to thank for my safe arrival. Your assistance arrived not a moment too soon, if I may say so. You're very welcome, sir. I'm glad we could get you here in one piece. Indeed. We thought we were prepared for our arrival in Hotari space, but it is evident my craft was not sufficiently robust for such intense ionic activity. The storm has been pretty intense. There was an element that was most unusual. Before you came to our aid, our maneuvering thrusters and impulse engines were rendered inoperable. So we attempted a short traversal at warp speed, only to find that we could not achieve warp at all, even though our diagnostics computer showed no faults or anomalies. What do you make of that? When all indications say that warp speed is possible, but in practice, we find it is not. Well, onboard diagnostics can be wrong. I can take a closer look at your shuttle systems to get to the bottom of it. Hmm. I would appreciate that. Take readings, run some additional diagnostic checks, and we'll get to the bottom of this. Quite logical, Petty Officer Diaz. Thank you. Ambassador Spock. Excuse me. I'm honored to have you aboard. I'd like to get right to it. We're already behind. Spock on kanssa tässä jutussa nyt mukana. Tää on aika mielenkiintoinen, mitä noin korkearvoinen tyyppi tekee täällä. Jos ei ollut Leonard Nivoi, niin oli oikein hyvä imitaatio hänestä. Provocation of War. Niinpä tietysti. Ambassador Spock, my senior staff. Not every day that a captain gets to welcome a Starfleet legend aboard. Hmm. You flatter me, Captain Solano. But legend implies the past tense, whereas I am very much focused on our present circumstances. I didn't mean to suggest you were stuck in the past. You're right, Ambassador. Not the most diplomatic choice of words. We're all curious about the future, Ambassador. Specifically, what exactly are we getting involved in here? We got the basics from Starfleet. Two formerly peaceful neighbors are now on the brink of war. Indeed, and the tension between them grows fiercer by the hour. Olivia and Hotari. The Lydians are the more advanced species. They made first contact with the Hotari over a century ago. This is Tau, the Hotari moon. It is rich in dilithium, and for decades, the Hotari and the Lydians have shared a mining operation there. The Lydians provide the technological resources, while the Hotari have served as the labor force. Yeah, I'm the stability of that enough. arrangement was the source of their peace until recently. The Hotari have suddenly and forcefully seized control of the mining operations and expelled the Elidians from their system. That is the official story, as told by the Hotari when they requested Federation mediation. But the details remain scant. Communications between all parties have been limited by the ionic interference. Hmm. Have the Elidians retaliated against the Hotari? or taken any action against them. Surprisingly, they have not yet responded in kind. They were open to a Federation presence, but it is unlikely the relatively primitive Hotari forces would stand a chance against the Elidian fleet in open war. Left unchecked, this conflict will result in more bloodshed, which is what we are here to prevent. And the dilithium trade hangs in the balance. Clearly, uh, the Hotari have been exploited in this relationship. Maybe we can persuade them peace is the more profitable alternative for everyone. They both profited from the mines. 
And for the Hatari, something is better than nothing. Peace is our objective, after all. If we could convince them, it would restore the peace. But we would need the Hatari to accept a difficult compromise. Made all the more difficult by the emotions flaring on both sides, no doubt. Neither the Elidians nor the Hotari are members of the Federation, so we can't make them do anything. There is an additional complicating factor I should mention. In the past, the Federation has relied on the Elidians as a source of dilithium. But the others That certainly changes things. And the Elidians the galaxy is its dilithium from a lot of places. Yeah, and this is one of them. We could use that as leverage with the Elidians. They'll want the Federation to continue buying from them. There might be something to that, Commander. Putting that on the table could make the Hotari more hostile. Given the Federation's involvement in the Elidium dilithium trade, Captain Salama and I must make several of the Elidian negotiations. What worries me is if this whole thing unravels and we're at the mercy of the storm at less than full strength. We can't let it come to that. Considering what the Ion Storm has done to our ship, and the Ambassador's shuttle, we have to assume the Elidian fleet has had problems with it as well. This recent surge in the energy disturbance temporarily levels the playing field. Commander Westbrook is correct. The energy anomalies around the Hotari systems have been noted in the past. That may answer why the Hotari were able to strike back after so long. They finally had an opportunity, and they took it. That would also explain the Elidian's restraint. And reason to learn as much about the energy anomaly as we can while we are here. We do not want to be caught at a disadvantage of our own. Anomalioita ja... So I trust we understand our ja We're operating on a strict timetable <clears throat> here, and we're going to be leaving for the negotiations shortly. Commander Westbrook, I want you to leverage our systems to investigate the anomaly from here while we're gone. Hi, Captain. Thank you all. Dismissed. I want to speak to both of you privately. Uh huh. Ambassador Spock, I'd like to make a formal introduction. My first officer, Commander Jara Rydek. Commander, as you are aware, there are limits to what Captain Solano and I can do in our official capacity as representatives of the Federation. But someone in an unofficial capacity, your first officer, for example, would not be bound by those restrictions. Commander Ryder could ingratiate herself to certain parties behind the scenes, where they may be more candid in revealing information that could lead to a resolution. That's his at all. She certainly knows how to say the right things. At least when she wants to. I'm perfectly happy to work outside the lines. And by extension, you will be doing your duty, Commander. Just not too far outside the lines. Well, I hope Commander Rydek will have more luck finding out what really happened than we will through official diplomatic channels. The fate of the negotiations, the interests of the Federation, and the prospect for peace may very well depend on it. Hey, bye, Nathan. Mr. Diaz, I understand you have already discussed the warp drive failure with Ambassador Spock? I have. It is imperative that the Ambassador's shuttle be flight ready. I need you both to ascertain the root cause of the system failures he encountered. I'm surprised, Commander. I thought you would have wanted to work on Ambassador Spock's shuttle yourself. I respect the Ambassador and his many accomplishments. But I do not derive any satisfaction from interacting with his shuttle as if it were somehow transubstantiated through its association with him. <laughs> Especially when I have the entirety of this starship to concern myself with. When you look at it logically, yes, it is just a shuttle. No different than any of the others. There is plenty that is different about it, and that is what you are to investigate. 
but please limit your findings to observable scientific phenomena. We'll try to restrain ourselves. Yeah. Then I will leave you to it. You bet the other Make state. note of any abnormalities in your report. Carry on. It seems like he's warming up to us. Yeah. <laughs> Who be bad? Even Chobok has to look at that face and know you've earned some real respect. And I have to admit that I owe you one. You were right to make me go first. I don't know what I was thinking. You've pulled me out of trouble how many times? Call it even. Okay. At the very least, maybe I can track down that bottle of Saurian brandy you're still on the hook for. But first, we have work to do. Hey, Sarah Flama. Ready to go? All set. Let's run the diagnostic. Itsi itsi oikea oikea nappi. Noni. So... I know about your talk with Miranda. You... you do? She sent me a priority one dispatch right after your conversation. But the others do. I'm happy for you. Both of you. <sighs> Thanks. But I'm only going to tell you this once. Don't screw this up. <laughs> because I would be very <laughs> unhappy if you tried this out and then, I don't know, six weeks or six days later, I have to start splitting holidays between the two of you. All because things went south and you're not on speaking terms. That just isn't going to work for me. You really don't believe in me, huh? It's not you. Or her. Just running the numbers, and things don't work out more often than they do. I like my friends, and I like our group. I don't want to lose that. Is that thing done yet? Yeah, yeah it's wrapping up. Let's see. The relays along the primary EPS are blown. The backup relays are all intact. An EPS overload from the warp drive could cause that. But how did the shuttle end up dead in the water? Huh. Well, maybe the ship's data recorder can tell us something. Here. They were only about eight minutes from their plotted warp point. No faults, just those warnings. What are they? Subspace. Subspace variance out of tolerance. Variant. What does that mean? It means the main navigation array lost sight of space somehow. Will the array going offline cause that? Yes, but it should have also thrown a fault code. The warp field became inverted suddenly. I've seen this happen when the center warp coil cracks. A cracked warp coil throws a fault code. Still, we should take a look. There was a complete warp cascade failure. Wow. They're lucky the shuttle didn't turn inside out. Makes me think the computer panicked on the warp field equation. Any one of these failures should have thrown a fault. If it was caused by a system failure. None of this caused the relays to blow. Roll forward to when that happened. Yes, ma'am. So here, they take a moment to get their bearings and they attempt to re-engage the warp drive. There. That's the relays blowing. And look, there's another warp system alert. They're all the same. Subspace variants out of tolerance, or warp inversions. Finally, there's a complete warp cascade failure. Then it's one of two things. Either a warp coil is cracked, or the navigation array is offline. That makes sense. Divide and conquer. You want to check the warp coils or the navigation array? I'll check the other. Let's not overcomplicate this. One of these systems is likely broken. I'll check the navigation array. Se on todennäköisempi syyllinen. Tricoderi. Yo, 
Loki Gull scan mode. Tähän me etsin tässä näin. Kaikki järjestelmät näyttäisi olevan ehjänä tällä hetkellä. Navigation array checks out, so it must be a coil. Except it's not. Checked and double-checked. Well, the readings don't lie. Here comes the security detail for the way team. My daughter is still in the loiter group. She's just a little bit of a blue shirt. Hey. I'm not here. <laughs> no, but We're escorting the negotiating vaihtoehto. team to the surface as soon as they come down from the bridge. I don't want to interrupt some important work. I was just hoping to see you before I go. The captain and the others will be here any minute now. Should be an interesting ride down to the surface. Come on, I'm never too busy to make time for you. That's not true. <laughs> no, but I am glad you came by. No, that's more accurate. I gotta be precise with you, huh? Hey, Maris. Aren't these those button pushers you're always hanging out with? And you're the phaser jockeys we always beat in Parisi squares, right? All aboard for Hotari! That another one of the captain's railroad things? <laughs> gotta be. I just usually zone out by the time he gets to the whole, uh, steam engines were the warp drives of their day part. Get you all later. You don't want to miss your train. I do have to go. Not gonna lie, I'd rather not leave right now. That was that nice. Done. Yeah, it was. Save some of that for when I get back. We've got a deal. Okay, to go away, but I must. Be seeing you. We're going to drama on the altar. Don't let go of it. Since then, I've been doing a lot of stuff. It's Lord Diaz. If you can float back down to reality, we still have a ways to go. Mystery diagnosis. All right, where were we? So the warp coils in the navigation array are fine, but the nav computer doesn't seem to think so. I'm out of ideas short of field stripping the shuttle from bow to stern. You want to take this out of the shuttle and throw it on the bench? Oh, real hands on maintenance. I like it. Okay, the nav computer is patched into the ship. The ship's computer can double check our work. If the shuttle's nav computer is putting out false data, we'll know it. Let's run to the shuttle's logs again. Running now. Well, miten moni pelintekijä käyttää tuota kuormasta syömistä naimista juonen kuljetukseen ja onko idiotismia sekä pelintekijä tätä oikein enemmän kuormasta syöillä? However, the Resolute computer doesn't show the same subspace. We're in the same conditions that the shuttle was in when it failed. 
Why wouldn't the ship's computer get a matching result? What if the subspace variance was a momentary occurrence? And it would explain why the simulation under our current sensor readings failed to reproduce the issue. But a subspace anomaly strong enough to cause a warp field collapse would leave graviton ripples for days. Let's run with the momentary subspace variance theory for now. Roll forward to the shuttle's attempt to re-engage the warp drive. We need the conditions of space around the shuttle at the moment of warp failure. Resuming simulation. Error in warp field calculation. Cochrane formula variables are out of range. That right there. Take the shuttle sensor data from that moment. Computer, why did the warp field calculation fail? Warp field pressure return non-orthogonal. Results are undefined. That doesn't help. Wait, what if we use a different ship? Put the Resolute into the simulation instead of the shuttle. Yeah, it should warp just fine. Unless... Computer, run the simulation with the Resolute. Resolute simulated. Computer, give me manual control on the warp power. Static of intensity, warp 1.1, 1.2. Warp pressure is destabilizing. Error in warp field calculation. The warp drive has experienced a system-wide cascade failure. Warp field collapsed. Subspace variance is out of tolerance. Cochrane formula results are undefined. Bingo. What-o? The same moment when the shuttle failed to warp, so did the ship. Whatever happened to the shuttle just happened to us. The Resolute will not sustain warp. We can't leave Hotari space. Mm. Var varpi ei toimi. Varmaan enemmän tolosi elämässä <laughs> tapahtuu kuin pelissä. 22 years, years of business I don't recommend to that. <laughs> Totta, kyllä. Työpaikkaromanssit ei ole välttämättä ihan paras juttu.